Thanks, Janisa, and uh, welcome everyone uh, to another one of our series on um, markets and market intelligence. And today, uh, the topic we will be discussing is uh, learning technology and uh, the supplier landscape for learning technologies. Uh, I apologize ahead of time, I have a little bit of a cold, so uh, you might uh, sense that. Um, but I'm excited to cover this topic today, and uh, it's a topic that, uh, and a market that we really dive deep into and uh, hope uh, you'll uh, get some key takeaways from this as well as um, join us for uh, multiple uh, uh, webinars and events we'll be doing around this topic. So let me just jump in, see if I can get my PowerPoint to work. Here we go. So today's topic, um, we'll be covering, uh, really it's a short webinar. Uh, it'll be about 30 minutes. Um, uh, there are four uh, quick uh, areas we'll dive deep into or dive into. Um, so one is uh, we'll be defining learning technologies um, based on the work we've done thus far. Uh, how are we looking at the market and how are we defining learning technologies? So we'll give you a broad overview of that. Uh, second, we'll just talk a little bit about the use cases and demand. Uh, as part of our work, we also really try to understand where demand is coming from and what types of use cases there are so we can really understand how customers are uh, really uh, looking at any sector. Uh, so we'll be talking a bit about that. And then uh, we'll be providing a demo of GovShop and that's how I'll cover uh, some of the supplier landscape today and some of the work our team has done. And then uh, just quickly highlight future work we'll be doing in this area. The intended audience is uh, really, um, could be contracting professionals as well as anyone in the market uh, from a government program standpoint. A lot of individuals that are actually running training programs and uh, leading uh, workforce development initiatives, uh, as well as uh, companies that are involved in the learning technology sector. So uh, I also just wanna encourage everyone, uh, just uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, hopefully they'll break up the monotonous <laughs> part of me just talking here so we don't have any other speakers. So uh, please do uh, feel free to ask any questions and we'll stay on the lookout for that. And, and Yanisa or Frank, uh, please just let me know and feel free to interrupt uh, if you do see something. Uh, before we uh, get started, I do wanna uh, thank our sponsor, iValia. Uh, you all may know iValia. Uh, as an e-procurement platform. Uh, really, iValio is uh, working across the world, both with uh, commercial uh, private sector companies, uh, as well as government, uh, including uh, state of Maryland, Ohio, um, New York City, uh, federal government of Canada, um, to really provide end-to-end procurative pay suite. So you can really enable your uh, entire process, including your uh, e-procurement process. So please check them out when you get a chance. Okay. I'm not, sorry, I'm just clicking over here. Looks like I've, here we go. I'm back on PowerPoint. Um, also, I just want to mention really quick, if you have not checked out GovShop, we will be looking at that today and looking at some of the suppliers within GovShop. But GovShop is uh, a platform that public spend form built out. Uh, it's uh, really a single place that we're building where you can search for suppliers for any industry. Um, today we'll be covering learning tech as part of our emerging tech focus, but really you can find suppliers for any sector as well as research contracts as well. So uh, we'll be diving into that as well and you'll get to see firsthand uh, what GovShop looks like. And you're probably familiar with the Public Spend Forum. Public Spend Forum is a global platform for best practices uh, so we can improve public procurement across the world. All right, enough of that. I will just go ahead and jump into uh, our main topic, uh, learning technologies. So um, I'm gonna start off by just talking about the segmentation. You know, um, as, as part of our work, whenever we dive into any sector, our team uh, does a whole lot of work to one, understand uh, the market, um, both in terms of the demand and use cases, as I mentioned, but then how the industry is being segmented. And we also have subject matter experts. Uh, today, we don't have one of them on with us, but we 
have many subject matter experts that are involved in each area. So uh, when we started looking at learning tech, uh, really uh, interesting area, uh, an area that's developing a lot and a lot going on. So, um, so we uncovered a lot of uh, different segmentations uh, in terms of when we looked at industry reports, et cetera. And we tried to simplify the definition of learning technology a little bit. And, and what you see on this slide is really our um, simpler, hopefully, depiction of how the firms break out in learning tech. Uh, first of all, learning tech at the top of the page here um, really is broadly about enabling the, uh, both the management and assessment of learning programs. So if you have uh, um, you know, your uh, workforce and they're taking courses, et cetera, so the, all the planning that goes in as well as tracking the progress Etc. So that's one part of learning tech, right? And then second is actual delivery of content, the training classes. So that's the broad definition. But then the three main segments really break into what I just said. Um, first, um, there's a whole class of systems you see on the very left here. It's learning management systems. Uh, so that's a, a, a quite a broad array of companies. But essentially, learning management systems, uh, as the definition says here, uh, are used to administer, document, track, report, deliver, uh, all of those things, uh, courses. So it's, think about it as the overall system that's used to really manage your learning programs, right? Uh, everything from what content you'll be providing, as well as uh, really tracking the progress of your students and your curriculum and all of those things. So that's the learning management systems. And then in the middle, um, you have uh, learning uh, technology applicant software. So that's actually a whole class of software, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, that, um, that really is actually used to deliver the content, right? Um, so we have a couple of examples, and uh, next slide we'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, there, there might be, for instance, adaptive learning courses. So this is a type of technology that uh, where um, it really uh, personalizes the learning experience and changes the course content based on the user. So that's one example of uh, learning technology application software. Uh, you also may have game-based learning or uh, learning tech that's using augmented reality, for instance. Uh, so there's a whole class of uh, different software here and that will uh, just uh, give you a sense of how we broke it out. And then on the very right is learning technology services. Uh, so learning technology services are really, um, you could think of them as support services, everything from if you're thinking about buying a learning management system and you need help in picking one, right? Or if you need to just plan out your curriculum, et cetera, or the implementation of a system, all of those things. So you have consulting firms as well as more specialized firms that actually provide those services. So that's what learning technology services covers. So hopefully um, this is uh, at least gives you a broad view. And I'll just admit up front, I am not an expert on learning technology. So um, on our next webinar, uh, we promise we'll have one of our deeper experts on this. But this is really the, the broad view uh, of learning tech. And then the next slide just uh, takes uh, the middle segment because um, uh, there's a number of different types of uh, technologies being used in to deliver content. And so what we've done is we've started breaking it out. So what I'm showing you here is not necessarily is going to be the end all be all. I'll promise that. Uh, we might be changing some of this over time. Um, but what we do have is a good start. And um, so uh, right now here we have about seven different sub segments under learning tech applications, everything from AI based learning to e-learning, uh, to blended learning, which takes many of these technologies and blends them. Um, adaptive learning, as I mentioned, number two here, is uh, quite prominent right now and it's being used more and more, especially in adult learning. Um, then you have game-based learning, mobile learning, mixed reality, which is really about augmented and virtual reality. Um, so, so this is just a breakout and I'll show you how the number of firms breaks out in these different um, segments, uh, at least uh, based on our initial work in this area. 
So now that you have some sense of what learning tech segments look like and what the different classes of applications look like, I just want to cover a couple of use cases. So it's always important, right? Technology at the end of the day is only useful if you're solving a problem, right? So we need to really understand the use cases, right? How are the customers and government actually using technology? So there's a couple of uh, three different examples. I don't have any examples from state or local right now, but we do have a few that we can cover next time. Uh, these are all tend to be more federal. I realize after I put this slide together, um, so we'll cover state local next time. But uh, let's take learning management for a second. So, um, you know, we actually went through over 250 opportunities. And what we did is we actually classified them against each one of these three areas, right? So what I can tell you, first of all, actually, before I go into these use cases, the large majority, so about 50% out of the 250 different opportunities we analyzed, fell within learning tech. So that what that says is if you're a vendor or even if you're government, right, um, that tells you that about half the requirements going out uh, as procurements um, for learning tech fall within uh, government agencies really trying to uh, buy some of those very specialized classes of software, right, that we covered in the previous slide. Um, about, um, 20, uh, about 25, 30 percent fall within learning management systems. So there's a lot of agencies out there looking for learning management systems so they can really manage and administer their entire process. And then there's uh, uh, agencies that are looking for help. That's about 20%. Um, don't quote those numbers because we're still continuing to analyze more and more demand. And, uh, but, but I think it's a, it's a pretty good indicator that learning tech application, uh, a lot of agencies out there buying that. Um, and then the other two segments fall right after that. So let me just quickly cover these use cases. So the first use case under learning management system, um, that's uh, from the US Administrative Office of the US Courts. Uh, and it's for actually a learning management system. So I'll just quickly go over to the, uh, the actual opportunities. So you see here. So here we have learning management system. Uh, from the US courts. So if you actually read through this and, and we can send these links uh, If you read through this basically what this agency has done here is uh, You can see they're uh, they're they're seeking information uh, Regarding the availability of commercial off-the-shelf learning management systems. So they're actually You know starting out and trying to understand what the learning management solutions are out there, right? And hopefully our data helps them um, so, and then if you go down further, you can actually look at their statement of work and they actually put together a functional requirements package over here. Um, I honestly would tell you that that's probably not the best place to start with an RFI. I would not put our requirements package with an RFI uh, because I don't think you want to be that specific starting out and you want to first explore the market and, and let the vendors kind of tell you what kind of requirements you should be setting. But either way, uh, this is a good example of an agency looking for a learning management system. Uh, let me go back to the PowerPoint for a second then. The second example we have is it fits within this uh, uh, learning tech application. So this is from the Defense Acquisition University, which is quite large. And in this case, uh, we've actually worked with them and we've looked at this. Um, they're looking for adaptive learning solutions for the adult learner. So these again are solutions that are able to personalize the experience to some degree uh, based on where a uh, student might be uh, in their uh, development cycle. So I will see if I can bring that one up here. Uh, so here it is. Um, so this is um, that opportunity. And if you go down here, um, basically they actually have a detailed set of questions. Uh, sorry, I had, I'm opening this up here. Um, so they have a detailed set of questions. If you read through this, uh, this is probably not the right document, but if you read through this, um, you'll see that this is really covering uh, a specific requirement around adaptive learning. And I'll show you some of the firms uh, that we have in our platform already through our research that we want to cover. And then the last one um, is, the, um, is actually the Federal Aviation Administration. 
And what they're looking for, they're actually implementing an e, uh, a learning management system and they need all the support services around that, everything from the implementation support, et cetera. So if I go to that, I actually do have that document open. This is a statement of work. And I just flipped over all the way to the task two. Task one was about program management. Task two actually talks about, they've looked like they've already selected Blackboard. You'll see it's a learning management system. And what they're looking for is integration support, right? So this is one example of um, learning uh, technology support services. Uh, and you can imagine every everybody who's learning and uh, implementing any of these, right, requires some support. So maybe hopefully they have some expertise internally. If not, you might look for some outside. So hopefully, um, you know, through these first uh, 10, 12 minutes, now you have a good understanding or at least a starting understanding of, um, I'll just flip back, what the segments are in the market, right? And then some examples of the uh, use cases. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip over and I'm going to show you GovShop and uh, that's how I'll show you the supply base and you can actually go yourself onto GovShop and take a look at um, the same set of uh, information that I provide you. So let me just flip over here. So I'm going to go here now. So if you're not familiar with GovShop, here you are. So all you need to do is type in govshop.com and you'll be here. So it's, a, um, it's laid out really as, uh, um, and the way we're thinking about it is the Google of supplier research. Um, so we've laid out a very simple search bar. Uh, I'll just uh, walk you through how to get to learning tech and just cover that area. So on GovShop, you can really um, search by keyword, but you can also search by commodity code, for instance, NAICS codes or PSC codes or NHGP codes, or you can search actually by contract vehicle as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just key in learning tech here right now. And you can key in different keywords, by the way. So, um, so you don't have to just, um, um, you know, key in learning technology. You could start out by e-learning, for instance, and start there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and type in learning technology. You see that learning technology comes up under these commodity codes. Um, PSF markets is really a unique code that we've set up. So I'm just going to go here. And that way you're, where we are is the learning technology landing page. This page actually, just to give you a heads up, is changing a lot. We're actually gonna have a redesigned page for this. Uh, it's gonna show you all sorts of content on this page pretty soon, uh, in addition to the supplier list. But what you see here is, let me just expand the size of this so you can see it better. So what you see is um, one, you know, there's learning technology, it falls within our IT and emerging tech uh, markets. Right, and then it just tells you a little bit of a definition. Like I said, pretty soon you're going to be able to see articles and uh, even opportunities and contracts and everything here. Um, but for now, this is what it is. In the next few weeks, you'll be able to see more information. What you can do here is you see a supplier list below, right? But before that, I go there, I want to show you here. If you just look at commodity codes, this is where you'll see the segmentation that I just went over, right? Um, so here you are, there's learning technology services that we mentioned, uh, learning tech applications, right, and learning management systems. So you can click on this little plus box here, and what you see is that breakdown that I showed you on the PowerPoint again, right? So on each one, what you can see is, okay, under learning technology, there's 38 companies we've classified under there. Uh, under, under learning tech applications, there's 203 companies, but then they also break out by... Uh, each subsegment, so you can go look at each one of these separately, and then you have learning management system with 51 companies, right? So what I'll do is I'll actually just go ahead and go to learning management systems, and so now we are on the learning management systems. It looks like the same kind of page, right, as the previous page, which was at a higher level, right? So what you what you can see here again is um, a uh, list of 51 companies, right, that, that we've classified and we're continuing to classify more. By the way, these are emerging tech companies as well as traditional companies that may have already worked with government. So we're bringing both of those types of companies in. So one thing I wanna show you that we just rolled out, you can actually click on this little summary report button if you have an account, which is free to create. You can click on this. I can put in over here, 
learning tech, let's say, and say sample report or whatever you want to say. And I'll just click here. And I'm going to show you that this, this will give me a breakdown of the companies in a second. So now if I click on this report, this is a beta version of our uh, market report. And this, we'd love to hear from you what else you want to see in it. But I just want to show you simply what this shows. Um, it shows how many of these companies are actually starting out. There's 51 companies. Uh, there's 38 registered in for federal government. But then this is actually wrong. Um, so this is uh, something we're fixing. There's actually emerging companies in here. So there's probably at least 13 emerging companies and, and many more that are coming in. Then it tells you by size, uh, by set aside program. So you can see right here, uh, there's three STVOSB firms and five women owned small businesses. I'm not actually surprised that there aren't that many minority companies in here because you know this is a high tech sector and uh, maybe there, uh, there, there, are problem, there are more coming, and uh, hopefully. Uh, but this is what we have right now. So you can see there aren't too many uh, uh, minorities set aside. But then you see what type in terms of whether, uh, you know, many of these companies are software and services companies. You see by size over here um, and, uh, as well and by ownership. So the size, it tells you Let's see, the biggest group is 17 of these companies are quite small, one to $5 million, right? And then 13 of these companies are five to $50 million and, and seven are just less than 1 million. So, so what this tells you is many of these companies are quite small. And that's at least what I can conclude from this, right? So let me just get out of this. So this is a quick and easy way and we're developing this report further. Uh, but this is a really quick and easy way for you to get a quick snapshot of the market. And you can even save this for your file and everything. So let me just click out of this, go back here. So now you've got a quick view of the market, right? There's uh, a few minority companies that have set aside programs. There are uh, many small companies. So maybe this is a candidate for a small business set aside, right? So you already have that understanding, right? So now let's maybe look at these companies a bit. Um, so now we're at the browse and filter. Sorry, um, I, I clicked on the browse and filter and it brought me here with all the filters on the left side and then the list of the companies now that you see here. So you can go in and you can start to use some of these filters like firms registered with the federal government or firms working with state local. Now some of this data is being updated. So let's see, we still end up with 15 companies that are actually state local. Um, you can take click out of it and go to firms registered with the federal, federal government, 38. Uh, there are, we are going to have a filter here soon in the next uh, two to three weeks that's emerging companies. And so you'll be able to click on that as well. Um, you can also go down like you said, like I saw, okay, if you wanted to see those 8A companies, remember there were, I believe, I forget the exact number. Looks like there might be a little bug here. Um, because there were three in our report, so we'll look into that. But um, so right now it's showing us none. Uh, but then you can go down and you can also search by location, et cetera, and number of employees. So you can check out all these different filters. So that's one thing. And then I want to show you the last thing is, so within learning management systems, you start to see all these different companies here. You see, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, so Da Vinci um, is a, um, Looks like it's an emerging company. It is registered with uh, the government and uh, it seems to uh, serve all uh, state, local, federal uh, markets. And um, it's, uh, it's so you've, you've got a description of the company here. You've got some of this basic information about you know, their DUNS code, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then it tells you right here under specialties and expertise what they do. Uh, or at least a high level of what their specialty areas are. So you can see that here, online training, interactive learning, e-learning, uh, content strategy development. Uh, you've got some contact information here, and then you've got um, more information about size and minority. And then this is really interesting here. We put in a section where, you know, on, on one side of this, when you click on commodity codes, you can see which codes this is mapped to. But even more important in my view, is you can actually see what products and services are being provided by this company. So for instance, it says 
you know, there's an eco learn looks like this might be their learning management system. So if I click on this for a second, so, you know, they, we've got four or looks like there's five different ones, different five pro, uh, service lines or product lines to have, right? So I can click on this. I see eco learn learning management system. So this might, must be the system, right, that we just looked for. And so it looks like they also have a past experience uh, listed here. So some past performance, we're adding more and more past performance here. So this is just an example. We can go through this process and then you can see there's past experience here, some existing contract information. And then, um, um, so that's, that's a supplier profile. So I'm gonna go backwards here. So what you can, just a couple more things on this. What you can do is let's say you like DaVinci, you wanna look into it further. Um, maybe, you know, you did the same and you looked at a number of these other companies. What you can do is check these. First of all, I can uh, uh, save all of them to the list, see here. Uh, it says add to list. And what happens is when I do add them to list, it goes to my save supplier list. And then I can also um, do the same thing. I can either go to my save list here or I can do it right from here. I can share. Uh, when I hit share, you'll see an email pop up and you can export. You can, you'll get some of the basic information pop up into a PDF report. So these are some of the things you can do then. But um, going back then to learning technology, I just wanna end at this place here. I wanna just go back to that learning technology page and you, you, know, you can start out here and just look at these segments and see which ones you're really interested in learning about, see how many companies are there, you can do those reports, et cetera, and just get deeper and deeper into this space. So uh, hopefully this gives you a good uh, uh, start and uh, a place to start where you can start diving in if you are in the market for learning tech or if you're a company, you wanna check this out and make sure you're in here and all the information on your company's in here as well. Um, and uh, so let me just switch back here to the PowerPoint. So, um, so our next steps really, um, uh, what we would encourage you to do is visit the GovShop Learning Tech. The next steps we are undertaking is we are adding a lot, you'll see a lot more emerging tech companies on here in the next uh, several weeks. Um, so you'll see this list go from 251 to probably uh, at least a couple hundred more. Um, and then you'll see these companies classified. Um, so, uh, and then we'll be also sharing more demand information in terms of opportunities, et cetera. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I would encourage you to check this out and also email us, let us know uh, if you need any information at all. And if you're in the market for learning, uh, learning tech, uh, also let us know, we can help you out. We can either help you search or uh, and give you a sense of how else we may be able to help you. Um, so I don't know, uh, Yanisa or Frank, if uh, we have any questions or anything. Looks like there might be one question online. Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, is there a way to download the list by Excel? Well, I think I just showed you, uh, Crystal. Uh, um, the way you can do it is actually, um, do the PDF, we do not allow Excel uh, downloads. We are looking at some more advanced functionality. Uh, that would be a paid function where you would be able to download uh, and using that method. And so that will be rolled out over time. So hopefully that's help and that helps. Great, so I think that's it for today. And I uh, hope you found this session useful. Again, please stay tuned and do let us know how we can help and, and stay tuned, tuned for more, uh, uh, much deeper information as we go ahead on learning tech. Uh, thank you and uh, have a great day.